Voices of Defiance podcast number 43, recorded Saturday, August 22nd, 2015. I'm Kier. I'm Haley. And I'm Jay from Gallifrey Public Radio. A podcast member of the Gunna Geek Network. Just like the one you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of each individual. Check out all the other podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. And get ready, because geekiness begins in three, two, one. Welcome to Voices of Defiance. It's a podcast about sci-fi's television show Defiance and all of its universes to include, but not limited to, the video game. We're not experts, just a few fans like yourself that love the show and want to geek out about it. If you haven't caught up to the latest aired episode, you might want to pause right now and go catch up, since there will be spoilers. You have been warned. And now, let's have some fun and get on with the podcast. Go ahead, Omek. Make my day. Hello, I'm your host of Voices Defiance, Stargate Pioneer. My friends call me SP, and with me is the woman who is the reason, the cornerstone, the purpose behind Voices of Defiance. Her name is Shannon. Hey, guys. Also joining us today, I, I guess we just had to let him on so he could turn on the equipment. His name is Sean. I showed up again. <laughs> In fact, I was given, uh, just as a behind the scenes, for those of you who don't want to know, I'm going to tell you anyway, like before the show, SP is in like super producer mode. He makes sure everybody's where they're supposed to be and all the stuff is working and all that kind of stuff. So I like to give him endless crap about it. So he texts me like Tim is for, hey, you guys ready? No. Okay. I knew he was kidding, but. <laughs> he's, he's like, he's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, yeah, ask again, and he's I will just do. Fucking your authority. That's all it is. <laughs> that's all it is. I don't care. <laughs> as long as he shows see up. when he gets pulled over. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm even worse. Like I, I am the worse an idea it is, the more snarky I am. Yeah, he asked a cop one time if he's been eating donuts. Don't think that didn't get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> your eyes are red, sir. You've been drinking. Your eyes are glazed. You've eaten donuts. Step out of the car, sir. <laughs> So, like, just like Lethal Weapon, do you have a glove compartment full of tickets? Uh, no. Surprisingly enough, uh, Shannon tells me I drive like an old man. No, I don't the think the tickets that's are true. mine. Yeah, I, ha- the, I have I have a, a, a lead foot Sally a collage over here. of tickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never snarked off to one like he has, and we he did that when we were dating. And we please step out of the car, I'm like crap. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are we going to be late to the movie, but you're an ass. <laughs> I'm gonna be, be rethinking this whole dating thing now. <laughs> <laughs> and you said yes, I will marry him within what three I months? I know, and, and I was procreated, in le- and I was in league with the police department, but not that one, thank God. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think they didn't know me there. Just shows you have poor life making decisions. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think they didn't know me on that one, or you know, I'd be like. Remember that time your boyfriend popped off and we had to take him to jail, Shannon? <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> You should have kept him. <laughs> She's like, you can't do that. I'm like, you can't disrupt an officer's peace. She's like, yeah, but you can piss them off enough. They'll find something. <laughs> and put you in this lammer. No wonder you two like defiance. The town of degenerates. <laughs> exactly. Well, today we have a special edition podcast. This is not our normal podcast. Uh, we will be doing one live tomorrow. But just a reminder, you can catch us at gunnageek.com. Go to our, our webpage on there, Voices Defiance, you can find all the great ways to contact us, our emails, Twitters, Facebooks, including our voicemail line, 612-888-ARC-1 or 612-888-2751. Well, talking about the snark, today we actually have another interview with the wonderful Trenna Keaton. (gasps) That was great for us to get another chance to talk to her. And I just, I can't wait to listen to it. What about you guys? Oh, hell yeah. All right. So we're just going to get right down into it. Here we go. So today we have a wonderful interview again. Matter of fact, the first person we interviewed with Defiance. Yes, she's back. Her name is Trenna. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you guys? We are awesome. It's always good to talk to Doc Yule, the quippiest person in defiance. Queen of snark. <laughs> it's always good to be here with you guys. 
Yeah. So this season, you have had one heck of a roller coaster, as always. I mean, you've gotten to blow stuff up. You've gotten to stab your assistant. You're caging animals. You got the side braid to unplug you. I mean, what a fantasy season for Doc Yule. That's right. Things have been a little bit dramatic and at times traumatic for her. <laughs> But it's been a great season, and it was a lot of fun to do this season. And I think that I think that it's a good season. I've been loving watching it so much. You know, sometimes when you're shooting it, you, you don't really have any idea how it's going to come together. And I'm always so pleasantly surprised. We've been having fun watching. Is the first time that you see it when it comes out? Yeah, we had seen as the cast and crew. We had seen the first two episodes before we finished filming the season. So I had seen those ones, but other than that, it's all new to me. And we need to talk about the red elephant in the room. And by red, I'm, of course, talking about your husband being a red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's just delivered my coffee so he can say hello to you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, that was fun to have him on the show. And uh, we kept saying when we were watching the episode, well, you don't actually see you, Dad. Maybe they can bring you back. <laughs> It's comic book dead. It's pretty. He's pretty dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he just looked at me and said, "I'm dead." <laughs> well, okay. So that character is dead. But since he came in as a Cassie, he can come in as something else next time. He could even come in as a human. Yeah, it's true, and it's it's really funny because he had only auditioned for the show once, and that was for an Arasian, and. uh all, you know, for the last three years, we've always been saying to each other, oh, my God, you would make such a good Arathian. And, and uh, he really wanted to be one. And then when he got the part as a cast of that, I was like, oh, weird. Never thought of you as a cast of that. <laughs> but <laughs> it worked. But now I think he'd like to come back as an Arathian. <laughs> sure. <laughs> or an Indogene. I need some Indogene company. Yeah, you do. You're running pretty low on that. Although, aren't the indigenes like a low population from the beginning? Well, I guess so. Yeah. They kind of have to be because our makeup is so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I had Billy McClellan for a little while. I had a little bit of company in prosthetic hell. So, <laughs> I can't complain. <laughs> yeah, I saw that wonderful picture of you two on that red duvet or whatever it was in the Chase Lounge in the uh, Needwant in with yeah. without makeup. So, you guys were hanging out. <laughs> He was proud of yeah. the picture. Yes, we had a fun day that day, and uh, it was really fun having him on the show because I've known who Billy was for a long time because I've read with him in auditions many times, but he didn't know who I was, so it was kind of fun to tell him, oh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've met you many, many times, and he's, <laughs> he was just such a good add to the cast. Everybody enjoyed him so much, and I don't think they needed to hire a stills photographer this year because I think Billy took enough pictures to, <laughs> to <laughs> fill the, the role. All posted to Facebook, too. He was awesome about That's that. That's great. Yeah. He posted several to me at Twitter. Yeah. yeah. It's great. And He's got great photos. Did you hear his idea for bringing his character back on the show? I did. He sent me a big long, like he had it all written out and he sent it to me <laughs> because at the end of the season, Kevin Murphy asks us to fill out these sort of questionnaires. They ask us things about our character and we fill them out. And one of the questions is, where do you see your storyline going in the future? So Billy sent me his and said, this is what I said to Kevin Murphy. And I read it and I was like, wow, that's really detailed. And really freaking good. <laughs> so my response to Kevin was just, please see Billy McClellan's answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great going back in a little bit. We Oh, we saw the Castathan Homeworld this year, and it was absolutely gorgeous. They obviously CGI'd the heck out of that. I would love to see Doc Yule in her native machinery back in the Votan homeworlds. I would, too. I would love that. I even just want to see Doc Yule in her apartment. All these years, I've wondered where she lives. Really? I mean, I know she lives, <laughs> I know she lives above her doctor's office. That's her house. But I'm like, come on, guys. Come on, set designers. Let's put something in her house. I want to see what kind of things she has in her house. <laughs> I know Sean's envisioning a whole bunch of clearances. Yeah, it's all a bunch of frog skins and that kind of stuff. It's very amphibious. For sure. 
the whole upstairs thing. I think there'd be a lot of that. You don't know. It could have pictures of Amanda up there. Oh, oh, there's a picture of Sidebright up there. Although, wait, wait, wait. Ah. This week, we got to talk about it. We had like three seconds of full-on frog picture. I know. I know. I know. I wondered if that was for you guys. I, I noticed that. Oh, it was awesome. I had both my heads in the air. I was like, yes. That was the most HD <laughs> version it. I've Plants. seen of that the whole se- <laughs> the whole series so far. It was awesome. Yeah, I wanted a shot of just me like staring at it. But, uh, <laughs> longingly. <laughs> longingly. Just like, longingly staring uh, at it. <laughs> but I also think that Docule would have a lot of old world stuff up there because Michael Nankin and Kevin Murphy always talk to me about how she likes old movies and how she learned to speak English from watching old movies. And so I think there would be a bit of a mix of old world meets very freaky things in her house. Like a thermonuclear detonator and then a (laughs) picture of Doris Day. Exactly. Perfect. (laughs) So I got to ask, in the middle of the season, Doc Yule goes down into old St. Louis to check out the spores and that sort of thing. And did she have a plant? It just seems very on doc like Oh, you mean when she tells Samir that she's going yeah, to well, check out? Yeah, and then Kinsey just takes a hold of her and shoves the plug in. I know. It's a bit complex, that one, because it seems a little bit like, why would I let her? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, this seems like a bad plan like from start part to of the finish. Plan yeah. and you knew it was going to happen? Yeah. yeah. I think the way I justified it as an actor was that two things. As an indogene, Kevin talked to me a lot about how there is something in us that automatically goes to a certain level of submission with an OMEC and that we are, like I say, hardwired for slavery. So to some degree, even before she puts the control stem in, I don't have as much of a doc-like ability to fight her as I would like. So there is that. Also, there is just the, you know, she's pretty snarky with Kinsey, but she also knows that Kinsey can far outpower her. And with Kinsey being that close, even though I have a little bit of sass with her, I think I know that. It's either that or I get eaten right here and now. So that was kind of how I justified it in the scene. But also, Kinsey is kind of sexy. And Uh when she uh, got close, maybe it got a little bit weak in the knees. (laughs) Really? I would have. Sean's weak in the knees for her, too. (laughs) My husband is making the scissoring um, motion. (laughs) Hell yeah! yeah that's <laughs> Exactly. So, Kinsey versus Sidebraid, who wins out on that one? Oh, well, they're different. I mean, Sidebraid is the kind of girl you take home to meet your mother, and Kinsey's the kind of girl you don't. <laughs> Kinsey's the kind of girl you bring home to eat your mother. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Only you, babe. <laughs> well, she is. You know? So, how does it feel to have a bunch of possible clone Yules out there? Yeah, I was like, I get to be Orphan Doc this year. Yeah. I love it. It's <laughs> awesome. So if something um, happens to Doc, we know we've got backups. That's right. We've got backup. At first, it scared me when I read that episode. I was like, oh, my God. That's a lot of being in that prosthetic head if I have to be all of those clones. <laughs> 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 and actually, the first version of that script, Doc Ewell did get murdered. It was not a clone. It was actually me oh. that got murdered. Yeah. Not cool. Are you saying we actually lost Doc this season? We actually, yeah, in an earlier version, we did. We did. And uh, Kevin said to me, don't worry, Doc dies, but her clone is still alive. And I thought, I was like, oh, okay. But I was kind of disappointed because I was like, well, that's, that's a different character. Yeah. But then I kind of thought, well, then then that is open for discussion because how much is that character still like Doc and what differences are we looking for? And before we got any further with it, a new draft came out and they had changed it so that it was actually a clone that was getting murdered. So (laughs) it could have been a very different season. Could have been a short season for you. (laughs) Well, no, she'd had a clone. It would have been fine. They did that with Data in Star Trek. Several times. Yeah. 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 And And there's a whole BSG thing as well. 
Exactly. Where you had and Boomer and Orphan Black. And yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, right. it's a fairly standard sci fi move. Yeah. yeah, and it could have been a slow burn. It could have been like how long before anybody knows that it was Doc. I mean, who knows, actually? I mean, well, it maybe took them, it is. It took him a long time. <laughs> well, true, but it took him a long time to figure out that the bling was in there. Yeah, it sure did. So, yeah. Well, the only person who had noticed it was Samir. Samir. And I, I, you stabbed yeah, him. And I got him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shut him up real quick. That kid kills me. I love that character. <laughs> Samir. What's that? What are you doing? <laughs> what, what are we Did having for dinner? Last night? Yeah, you saw last night's episode. Yeah, oh, yeah. With, uh, of course. Yeah. When Daytac says he's going to pee in his cage, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan saved me. I knew he would come. <laughs> Yeah, no, no one had a yeah. he had a fanboy. He is like a damsel in distress. That's what Samir is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been in a cage six months before. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you just gotta stay positive, man. Your hero, That's your right. knight in shining armor is coming. You He's knew coming. your hero would save you, <laughs> Nolan. Everybody's gonna die around you, and then at the yeah. last minute, Nolan's gonna step in. Yeah. And the little like Snoopy yeah. dance he did on the ground was adorable. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the chance to play the scared clone and you've also had the chance to take the mask off this year yeah that was awesome that was exciting these guys had to tell me that was you they're like did you see trenna i'm like yeah she was doc Yule. no the other trenna <laughs> i'm like what what he, huh? had to go, he had to go back and watch it i had to like, go back and right watch here <laughs> that is a tribute ma'am to how good that the, the, both the prosthetic is and the how you do doc Yule. i did not recognize you and i've seen you out of makeup before i really did not recognize <laughs> the you. moment i saw it i was tweeting it <laughs> <laughs> like i know that face good eye good eye yeah, i didn't really tell anyone i didn't even tell my parents that i was going to be a human or my sister so they were pretty surprised to, to see me out of the mask i'm human but that was really that was really cool they've been talking about that for three seasons and so i just kind of thought oh i doubt it's ever going to happen as time went by and then michael phoned and asked me if i'd like to do that part and i jumped at it i thought that would be a lot of fun and yeah yeah it was pretty cool I'd love to do it again. So what's that character's <laughs> backstory? You tell us what you think that character is like. Well, I named her Laura. Okay. Because she doesn't actually have a name. She's just mother in the script. What's your first name? What's your first name? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I always name characters that don't come with a name. So she's Laura. And I think her husband is out of the picture. I don't know where he is. I think that Maybe her kids died somewhere in this season. That way, if they ever need to bring Lara back, we don't have to worry about uh, the kids aging. <laughs> Man, tough. Oh, the kids, they just died. Wow. My, yeah. uh, my husband's gone. My children have perished. And now I'm, been, yeah, I'm free. I'm now a dominatrix at the need want. <laughs> well, the reason why I say that is because those kids were so sweet and they were so good, but they were background. They weren't cats. So if you ever wanted to bring them back, it could be difficult. <laughs> well, at least <laughs> but maybe. at least they made it further than the kid that stabbed in the eye by Kinsey. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that was a bit gruesome, hey? <laughs> <laughs> You're just loving it. He has another <laughs> eye. Yeah. He'll be fine. Now he's more like a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So in addition to slashing and poking and slicing everybody, you also got to play a little Dirty Harry moment this past week. Oh, yeah. How submissive was that, drilling six into that dude's face? Yeah. That, that wasn't was a, submissive. That wasn't Omex submissive, Doc. That was awesome. And that block of shooting introduced me to uh, weapons in Defiance because I think I'm the only character in Defiance who has never um, fired a weapon until season three. I mean, I've had cold fire blasters, but of course nothing actually comes out of those. You've had um, mass weapons though. You've blown up the Bissell Pass twice. I have, <laughs> I've never actually had a real live weapon in my hand in three seasons. <laughs> I've had WMDs. Those are fine, but I didn't have a pistol. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So Trenna had never fired a pistol until season three. So... <laughs> Well, that was definitely a great moment, but I love the whole talking to Amanda. Please, Amanda, give me the gun. Please. That was a great Doc and side braid moment. Where I ask her for the weapon? Is that right, what you're talking about? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. 
Yeah, that and the whole thing where she's like mama's back and she's staring like Dirty Harry straight into the camera. That is awesome. You read the best lines. I, uh, I wanted to like tip the gun when I shot at him, you know, like real badass. And they were like, no, that's going too far. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead already. A little bit of Billy rubbing off on you. Yeah, that's right. Well, and I said to Billy, I don't know if Billy told you this, how... <laughs> there was one scene where he was firing a weapon and he was so worried that he blinked when he shot and they only did one take and he felt like he flinched and he was like, oh my God, I flinched. Like, it's going to be so bad. I hope they CGI my eyes. And he was just like <laughs> losing sleep over the fact that he had, had flinched. So I said to him, I was pretty happy that didn't look like I flinched. <laughs> Although my eyes are my eyes are completely CGI'd, so uh, maybe I did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can, it's know. not possible for you to flinch. <laughs> That's right. I'm like Botoxed every <laughs> nothing moves. <laughs> well, at least you didn't ask for your gun to be warmed up by the fire before you held it. <laughs> oh, that was so embarrassing for him. <laughs> yeah, poor that little was Billy. Hilarious. I know. High maintenance. No wonder they killed the guy. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Doc, now Doc, on the other hand, four hours in the makeup chair just to not hold a gun. Quit being such a drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he talked about his arms getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, we still like you, man. You're welcome back on the cast whenever. Uh, he was such a good sport. We teased the hell out of him. and He was such a great sport about it. Just a genuinely yeah. nice guy. Yeah, he is, and he's a, he's a good storyteller. He's always got good stories. <laughs> we still have one episode left we, we haven't seen. I see Doc taking one of those pods, going up to the ship, and, you know, taking it over and having her own little RV to... Yeah, she could totally do that. Go around the solar system. She has the skills, doesn't she? <laughs> she does. Well, we'll see. Yeah, it's, I can tell you this much. It's a pretty epic last episode for the season, so... Well, it better be, otherwise it'd be a tremendous letdown, because it's been an entirely building thing. The enti- I mean, for, they killed the entire Macaulay family the first episode oh, of season three. Yeah, I know! Uh, so, yeah, I thought that was a bad omen. I was like, oh my god, we're going to lose everyone this oh season. Oh my god, it's going to be like Game of Thrones! It's just, just going to start <laughs> killing everybody! We you know, almost rage quit. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, SP almost rage quit. He's like, I can't do it! <laughs> they, you know, we were so sad to to lose all of those castmates because they all brought such wonderful things to our show, and, and we just love them as people. And but this season, in my opinion, there's less characters just in general. Not you know, even there was more characters. I'm having a hard time thinking of actors' names right now. But uh, I think this season is really like sort of focused. We have fewer castmates and. Um, we all have our own storylines, but we all have this very solid through line as a unit as well. And I think it's such a strong season because of that. So the writers are, are doing something right. Right. Well, I mean, the town in the whole it started out with, what, 6,000 people, something like that. Mm-hmm. But because the McCulloch Mines were shut off at the end of last season, I see maybe less than 2,000, if not 1,000 in the town right now. Yeah, I, mean, I would. Yeah. I bet you're right on that, yeah. Yeah. It seems quite desolate, especially at the beginning of the season. You really get that feeling of people have fled and people have died, and the ones that have remained are going to have to fight. Are very hardy or very foolish. Well, I mean, you've all, I mean, you've, you've had so much happen this season. I mean, you lost the freaking arch. You've lost yeah. people in the mine. So you're, I think your town is dwindling a little bit. So, But I think it's cool that every cast member so far this season has had some kind of story arch. Well, yeah. and that's true. However, the one place we haven't had any big struggles is space. And we've got a ship and we have the little, like, I don't know, the, the little, little pods. golden butt plug looking things <laughs> <laughs> that, that take you up to the spaceship. You just say that. That's what they look like. I'm sorry. You talk to the designer to ask him where he got those models. That's where he looked. I'm telling you, that was his inspiration. <laughs> But you got the little glass butt plug things, and they go up to the ship. You could totally send, like, a small, determined band you know up what? to the ship. Uh, Doc to, needs to, to take Stama and find the rest of the people that are sleeping and poison them all. I don't know. I think yeah. you could turn all the hot pocket tubes that the Omec are sleeping in into sleep mode again and put them in freezer and then just have to deal with, with Kinsey. Yeah, who's well, that's what apparently... I wonder. I mean, if they... Yeah, like, if... Yeah. 
I wonder what the Olmec are like if Kinsey's not around. Maybe maybe they're just lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're weak. They want food. I think- well, yeah, but did you see the way the guy was like, hey, where's Tefkid? Well, how did that happen? And they were just not unthinking beasts. They were like, um, where are we? What's going on? Who's in yeah. charge? Just like regular people they're would. They're not mindless. No, they're creatures. just like, hey, where's where's our leader? Yeah. Because he's crazy. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah, the, the, the Omec are an interesting race, that's to say the least. We've got a little bit of incest here, a lot of psychopathic tendencies, <laughs> and cannibalism. Yeah, you basically tell Kinsey, you're not right. <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's coming from a mass murdering person who used to operate on other species just because she could. That's right. The doc even says that, look, I have a higher tolerance than most people for this, but that's messed <laughs> up. <you> know? <laughs> yeah. When Doc Yule yeah. tells you you need to slow down your psychotic operations and all that kind of thing, you, you probably should take a listen at that point. <laughs> You've yeah. crossed some kind of line. She does try and train Kinsey. She says the key to effective mass murdering is to keep your victims in the dark as long as possible. You know, she... <laughs> Effective mass murder advice. See, Doc Yule is a woman of many talents. That's right. <laughs> I like how you said you're kind of scared of her still, but you still have your snark. Because at the beginning of the season, it freaked me out how freaked out Doc was seeing the Omec. You just don't see right. that very often. And Doc was freaked the hell out. Yeah. And now you're snarking yeah. at her. It's like you're bait your animal there. That's right, because I think, though, like, she's had a little bit of time to adjust to the fact that there's an Omec around, and she's sort of found her bearings a little bit. But that initial seeing Kinsey is just like a chapter that you thought was closed long ago, and just the absolute fear of not being the top of the food chain anymore. Well, you're used to seeing Tefkin being paraded around by Stama in the town, so you're no longer going to be as afraid of him anymore. No, that's right. So she's had a little bit of time to adjust to it and gotten a little bit of her snark, but she still knows that they can take her down like that <laughs> if they want to. So there's definitely more fear than she has with anybody else. But, you know, it looks like you're kind of free from Kenzie at the moment because her favorite play toy seems to be t- Stom at the moment. Yeah. I don't know. That was very disturbing. I had trouble with that. I couldn't. The whole, like, about talk to about, eat the baby. Talk about traumatizing a baby on set. That baby was screaming. <laughs> oh, I know. I was I, I was saying that last night. I was like, oh, my God, I don't like this scene. I don't like this scene. <laughs> that wasn't fake. Oh, man. That child's going to be in therapy later. Good you know? thing there's two of them. <laughs> I mean, there's he's going to hear, like, when he's in elementary school, he's going to hear the one-eyed, one-eyed <laughs> flying people eater song and just <laughs> piss himself. <laughs> I mean, that poor kid is going to be like, ah! I don't want to make it go away. Glad there's two twins. I mean, and as a father, like you remember having an infant that small and everything, and you're like, "This is bad. This is bad. This is bad." You know, and uh, I don't know. It was very difficult for me to watch that. She sniffed the baby. I'm like, "Okay, I'm glad this is the end. I can't watch this." (laughs) It was difficult for me to watch too. And I, I mean, I know like their those twins. Their mom was always right there. But it must have been so hard for her to watch that. But I will say, at least by that point, those twins had been with us for so many months now. Their mom really trusted us, I think, as a group. They seemed to um, enjoy being there with the little boys, and everybody loved those little boys so much. So even though it looks horrible, I'm sure that the mom was not too traumatized by it. <laughs> ah, I see. I, she bought Amanda's uh, The Omec Are Here for Peace talk, too. I see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was fun having babies on set. It brings a whole different side out of people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we asked Jesse Rath if he had ever held a baby before this season. He's like, nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not even singing and dancing with them. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's kind of perfect because I think that's exactly like that's where a lack is, right? Yeah, he said the same thing. He's like, yeah, it's totally where a lack is and, and his mindset and everything like that. So it kind of works out. Well, but. I, I think out of the whole tar bunch, Tony's the only one who has a little girl, like almost that age. Well, a little, a little bit older. I think she's like two or so. Yeah. Yeah. And talking yeah. about Tony, you have had this wonderful relationship with Daytac. 
he even comes back to go get you, not just because he wants to figure out how to kill Olmec, because he's worried about you. And then you mm-hmm. go ahead, you stab him with the red juice, you <laughs> knock him out, you cage him up. Yeah. And then you let him out, and he's surprising with the blade of poking and uh, taking out the Omec. But eventually, you two are going to have to get back together. Do you think he's going to forgive you? <laughs> I think he will. I think he will. We have a sort of up and down relationship uh, right from the beginning. There's been a whole lot of uh, having to forgive each other already. And I think he kind of has forgiven me, even in the episode that we just saw. I feel like he's, I think he'd forgive me. <laughs> but we'll see. I totally think he would. Docuel and Daytac have saved each other so many times or helped each other out so many times. That's his war buddy. When there's stuff going down in the town, when the town's about to die and all he that kind of thing. He left Stama to go find you. It's Docuel and Daytac that make, and now sometimes it's a bad plan, I will admit. But they make a plan to fix things. Yeah. And they depend on each other. So those are one of the best friendships you really see or most effective friendships you see in the town of Defiance. It's actually quite interesting. It's true. I picture those two as coffee buddies when they're, well, when I'm a thousand and he's a hundred, because I think I'm already, <laughs> that's how old I am. <laughs> All right. I got a question. Speaking of Daytech, when, when he came to find you, when you were about to stick him in the arm and you, he's like, the other arm, was that Doc trying to be intentional sticking him in his bad fake arm? I think that was no. maybe her way of trying to save him or no? I don't think so. I don't think it was her way of trying to save him. I just think funny how that control stem works, right? <laughs> because it's like, why does Kinsey say that I have to kill everyone that I come into contact with? Is that how it works? But uh, no, I don't think it was her trying to save him. I think she was just doing her job at that point, which was the next person that comes and talks to me, I have to uh, put in the back of his truck. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get poked. <laughs> it has just been so great to watch Docule this season. She has been, I mean, she's always been interesting, but. Snarky. Oh, God. She has the best. She's always had the best lines, but this season is just better. She's just become this snarky, tragic figure that is <laughs> just amazing to watch. It's been great. Like, I've always said, I think that Kevin Murphy is my soulmate in my brain because <laughs> I love what he writes. For me, I mean, he's just got the perfect sense of humor for Doc. He clearly loves writing for Doc. And every time, I'm just so happy. But I also think he's also given me so many layers and levels to work with this year. Because, yeah, there is still the great snark. But he's given me lots of obstacles to deal with. And we see the more complicated side of Doc. And we also see sort of the more compassionate and even when she says to Kinsey that I think you're broken it could have been in a real snarky way I could have said those lines just like Doc and it could have been quite funny but Kevin and Michael encouraged me to actually speak honestly to her in that moment so I appreciate those kind of notes of finding when to use the snark and when to sort of back off of it. Oh, well, it's been working. It really has. She is one of the most interesting characters in town. And uh, it's obvious you're having some fun with her. Yeah. It's been just a pleasure to watch. It, has. it really has. And we're hoping, we're hoping Doc makes it through the last episode here. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we'll see. Thank you. Thank you for saying those kind words. That's nice to hear. It wouldn't be defiance <laughs> without Doc Yule. It really wouldn't. She just, exactly. She's made it from the pilot episode. She's made it. You're like, what? what is she doing? Oh, my goodness. She's blowing everything up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She's checking for lumps. Yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking, yeah. <laughs> well speaking of well, what is she doing, you've been doing some other things here recently, haven't you? You mentioned earlier it's Orphan Black. You did Orphan Black a little bit, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did. I did an episode of Orphan Black, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I really want them to bring me back. I had so much fun working on that show. They were such a great group of people, and it's such a fantastic show. And Tatiana's from my hometown, so I just love watching her soar with that with those characters. I can't say that character. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, that woman is a chameleon. It's incredible. She just knocks my socks off. Like I just can't get over how talented that girl is. And I think she's just becoming Canada's sweetheart and America's sweetheart in some ways because she really, she is. She's just 
genuinely such a good person. So I couldn't be happier for her for the success of that show. So, yeah, so fingers crossed. Let's hope they bring me back again. I just did a little thing on 12 Monkeys. Yeah. So it's just a very small thing, but I really uh, I like the the concept of that show. So I was really happy to just do what I could. And I've just been, you know, doing a few, got some irons in the fire. Going to head to Los Angeles in October just to uh, hang out with one of my best buddies. She lives down there and we write together. So I'm going to get some writing time in in uh, the fall, which I'm really looking forward to because Mm -hmm. we haven't been able to do that for quite some time between my shooting schedule and her shooting schedule. So we're going to make some time for that. I was going to say, if you're going to head down to L.A., I would recommend heading down maybe between like January and March and instead of having to film up in the uh, frigid tundra. Uh, no, I think I'm going to go in October just for like a quick visit. But uh, I tell you, if the show's not going or we're not filming or whatever, or if I'm not doing something in January, I think that's the time because let me tell you, I am sick and tired of January and February in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the show got renewed now, that would be putting you back at that time, wouldn't it? It, it, the, yeah, if the show were to get renewed right now, I suspect we'd go back to camera by Christmas. So it would put us right in that awful <laughs> shooting schedule again. Get with the program, sci fi. <laughs> Let's do summer. Let's do the town of Bermuda. <laughs> Cannot tell you how many times I've been tweeting renew defiance. That means now. It's crazy. For Docule, the best shooting time is to start early September because then I beat the extreme heat yeah. and the extreme cold uh-huh. because I'm really not sure which I hate more, the cold or the heat. It's still a toss up, but they're both miserable and the crew has to listen to my complaints either way. So for everybody's sanity, it should be best starting September. Let's film in 65 degrees Fahrenheit, people. At least you're layered in. I mean, Kenzie was pretty well, less layered. <laughs> Billy, coming back to Billy, Billy has also come up with a cooling system that he's like drawn diagrams and, and emailed me saying like, this is how <laughs> I think <laughs> that, that, yeah, this is what I think we could do to your costumes to rig a cooling system into the, I'm, this guy is full of, you know, they may have killed him in the show, but he's useful. <laughs> <laughs> he's useful. Let's do all that, Billy. St- That's why you recommended to Kevin. Murphy. Let's keep him around. Keep that guy around, even if he's just carrying my air conditioner behind me. <laughs> well, they do that for NASCAR and stuff. Hey, by the way, I loved your little part in uh, Schitt's Creek. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> thank you. That was fun. I those guys are my heroes. I love that show. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, that's tra- that. Oh my gosh. She's bouncing around. That is totally not Doc Yule. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> Little hair and makeup Crystal. girl. See, I named I named that character Crystal, uh-huh. and I was happy because on IMDb they actually put me as Crystal, not makeup girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you have plenty of experience with makeup, just in the chair, not you know. So, yeah. that's right. It it, it made sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, speaking of Billy, he sent us a video of him. I think it was a four hour sped up clip of him sitting in the chair from beginning to end and then taking it off again. Yeah, that's... Really? that's yeah. yeah, he sent us a YouTube video of it. Oh, uh, yeah. That's an ordeal you guys go through for that whole thing, so... You are committed to your craft, ma'am, and thank you. Thank you. I, I think it's a bigger ordeal for the poor sucker that has to put the makeup on me. Uh, <laughs> 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 because... There are days when you're just like, I can't do it! I can't put it on one more time! My face they're going to fall off and my eyebrows are falling out and I can't. <laughs> but uh, I've never considered myself a method actor, but I feel like a method actor in this role because the longer I'm in that mask, the crankier I get and the more, and because you can't smile, like it, I feel like I kind of assume the personality of Doc when I get into that mask. So... I'm a bit messed there. Yeah, we don't want cranky doc. No, thank you. I don't want to <laughs> be on the wrong stick of that. Uh, no. That's right. No. no. Yeah. A little bit of diabolical. Think of the poor suckers. Think, think of the poor suckers who work 16-hour days with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. My the prosthetics team, they're who are with me all day long. 
and uh, they're amazing, and we get along really well, and we actually have a ton of fun in the prosthetics Sweet. trailer. It's a really, really great group of guys. Awesome. Well, you are a wonderful actor. We've really enjoyed all the parts we've seen you in, especially Doc Eel. You've been the cornerstone, as I said before, of Defiance. We're really hoping for a season four. You're welcome back on the podcast anytime. And thank you very much for taking your time out this weekend to talk to us. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. And uh, thanks for having me. Anytime. Always. Great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Oh, I love Trina. Who doesn't? First of all, she's very generous with her time, as most of the actors on Defiance are. I'm really hoping somewhere that there's not this mandate in their contracts to go, like, you have to talk to some kind of podcast idiots for this season <laughs> of the show. Hey, I'm I'll, really hoping it's I'll not that. I'll be that idiot. I just <laughs> enjoy talking to them. But I just, I really enjoy both their perspective and the fact that they are all, like, sometimes, and, and SP, you know, you've been to enough cons, you know this, like, Sometimes, like, your greatest hero can, like, when you actually meet them in person, like, you, you watch this person in a series or whatever, and you actually meet them, and they're nothing like you hoped they'd be. Oh, yeah. Totally. You know, every person that we've talked to in Defiance has been absolutely Phenomenal. lovely. Yeah. They've been very gracious and very generous with their time and just genuinely nice people. Yeah. And it all started for us with Trina. She was the first person we did an interview, and she came back, and it... <laughs> she came back. <laughs> that just right says something. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it was, But she had such a wonderful season, and we still have one episode left, but she's had such a wonderful season. We couldn't not talk to her. She was awesome every step of the way, been through some heartbreaks, and we really appreciate her time. Well, her character, it's, and by itself, has progressed so much this season that... You gotta have the queen of snark. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's That's not. That's what I call her. She's the queen of snark. She is. <laughs> you know, it's very easy in a huge ensemble cast like this to have characters who are not one dimensional, but very kind of, um, stereotypical. You know, like, oh, this is the, the fighter. This is the, you know, the doctor or this is the, and they're all very rich and complex. And the people playing them have ideas about it and really, Hey, this is how I feel that the carry, this is how I played it. This is how I thought it should go. This is how they let me do it or whatever. And it's just, it makes a difference. It really does. It makes a difference. And she loves Clarence as much as we do. Exactly. She loves Clarence. You got to love, you got to have frog love. It's just important. Well, who does? Especially nowadays when Kermit is available, you, you know, you just got to go there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He broke it's up with his available. piggy. Yeah. Trina, again, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate talking to you anytime. You're welcome to call back in or just send us a note. We'll call you and we'll get this puppy rolling. And also, thank you very much to your husband, Alden, for bringing you coffee during our interview. We really appreciate him catering to your every need. And to acknowledging he was a red shirt. Red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just digging the scissoring motion. That was awesome. <laughs> It's like a man after my own heart. Alden, anytime you want to be on the podcast, just give us a heads up. We'll gladly have you on. <laughs> and, or both you at the same time. That's great. You know, we can do that. So anyway, this is be it for this episode. Come back right the next day. We will have our next episode, which we will talk about the 12th episode, The Awakening. We just can't wait for the season final as well. So come get our thoughts. And we will love to hear from you as well. And as we stated before, go to our contact page. It is gunnageek.com. Go to our podcast page on Gunna Geek. You will find all the great ways to talk to us, including our voicemail line 612-888-ARC1 or 612-888-2751, including you can email me stargatepioneer at gunnageek.com and give me a MP3 file voicemail for you. Ladies down under. Hmm. Do you wonder who I'm talking about? So that's it for this episode. We will see you right back tomorrow. This is Stargate Pioneer turning it over to Shannon. This is Shannon. And Sean. And I'm Turd Ferguson reminding you when you make out with frogs, just remember when they get excited, they pee themselves. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Two frogs in a cup? <laughs> exactly. I've had a frog pee on me before. See? Were you making out with them? No, I squeezed them too hard. <laughs> See, when you you squeeze a frog, remember if you if there's a lot of loving, they're gonna pee. So 
Just make sure you're in kind of a rubberized environment. Can we take that out, please? (laughs) (laughs) What? This is hardcore scientific advice. Doc Yule would agree with me. You're a dork. (laughs) I'm sure she would. You're a dork. Thanks for listening to Voices of Defiance. If you want to get in touch with us, you can catch us on Twitter at Voices O Defiance. Email us at feedback at voicesofdefiance.com. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Voices of Defiance. Swing by our website, www.voicesofdefiance.com. Or send us a voicemail on area code 612-888-ARC1. That's 612-888-2751. This podcast is not affiliated with Sci-Fi, the television show Defiance, or the Triom video game Defiance. Music titled after The Apocalypse by Schnee Schnook and Rock It Easy by Sound Rogue can be found on Pond5.com. Catch you next time and watch out for those hellbugs. Hello. Can you hear us? Hmm. We cannot hear you. Uh, hmm. This is fun. (laughs) I'm going to check my connection settings and I'll get right back to you, Trina. I'm sorry. Thing was working last night. You guys did not hear her, correct? We could not. Could you? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I checked it out last night with Steven. <laughs> That's what happens when your podcast rig tries to achieve consciousness, dude. Pretty soon it'll be producing HKs and then, you know, send somebody back to stop your parents from meeting. Hi, Jordan. Hi. Hi, guys. Hello. How's it going? That goes good. How about you? Good. Yeah, very good. Awesome. It's beautiful out today. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often up there, does it? <laughs> no. So I've just been sitting in my yard all morning and uh, drinking tea. Awesome. What kind of tea does uh, Doc Yule drink? <laughs> um, well, I was drinking licorice tea this morning. Licorice. And I just sent my husband to get me a uh, green tea misto down the street. So I'm w- waiting that arrival. All right. <laughs> Well, if he has to deliver while we're talking, that is fine with us. <laughs> Licorice tea. All right. <laughs> I have to share something with you guys as we were walking it out. My uh, second Skype machine turned off. It was because the laptop was not plugged in. <laughs> 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 I was like, that would have been good. I'm like, what happened? Oh, my God. So That's mm-hmm. great. Trying to <laughs> yeah. So the interview <laughs> lasted the exact appropriate amount. <laughs> for the <laughs> laptop battery. It's plugged back in now, so we're fine. Can't wait. I have 48, no, 47 days into the New York Comic Con. <laughs> awesome. New York Comic Con. You know, so far they haven't really announced any big people. That's you need okay. to take your audio rig. We need to get you set up and, they, and figure out how you're going to You know who I'm excited to see is Gina Torres. Gina Torres? Is She's going to be there for the first time. I mean, I've I've seen... The Firefly people. I've seen Kaylee. I've seen Mel. I yeah. have not. I have not seen. Well, Kaylee and and uh, Mal make the circuit a lot. A lot. I mean, they're they're around. But Gina, but Gina Torres, Torres doesn't really. She do came that. to Dallas two years ago, but she didn't come this one. So I I think she was I the only anybody, one that didn't make it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, well, she no, was the only one who Marina really wasn't here. Backrin didn't make it either. But uh, yeah, but she comes all the time she though. Cancels yeah. freaking all the time. I'm not going to get. Yeah, out. Not, she does. But I'm she picks up work all the time too. That's the problem. You know, she picked up Gotham. She picked up V way right. a few years but ago. See, like what? Well, you remember the whole crap I had to go through because I already bought that that ticket. I have a photo op with Marina. And oh she yeah, backed she backed out. But yeah. so I'm excited so far to see Gina. And uh, they just announced. Yesterday, the, the 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 blonde chick. I think her name is Jennifer Morrison from Once Upon a Time. The blonde chick. I have no idea. The main girl. The main girl. That's the the, the daughter of, of Snow White. And yeah, I don't watch that. Sorry. <coughs> uh-huh. The long blonde. As a matter of fact, I don't think I'm going to be watching Fear of the Walking Dead. I just I'm I'm going to cut the cord on that one. I don't know, man. I can't do zombie stuff anyway. I just don't. I, there's so much other stuff to watch. There, There's rumors that they're going to be doing a new Robotech series, um, anime style, very hey, shortly. Yeah. What is 12 Monkeys about? I've never seen that either. 12 Monkeys? You would actually... Well, no. You probably wouldn't like it. It's it's time travel, but it's um, how... it's They're trying to prevent the world from, from a cataclysm. And they think they've got an idea on how to do that. But they don't know all the pieces in between there. So they send somebody back to try and fix it. 
And it just go well, actually, they sent a lot of people back to try and fix it. And it just goes badly. And they can't ever prevent the catastrophe. Now, in the movie, they did make a movie about it. They got really close because they figured, you know, Bruce Willis was in it and he figured it out. And he figured out what happened because he remembered seeing it as a kid and he was there. But it, he died before in the in the past before he could fix it and kill the guy who spread the virus. And the TV show is not going by the same kind of thing, but it's 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 interesting, but it's kind of a slow paced drama. Yeah. And I, I don't think you're normally into those unless there's aliens involved. It's kind of like I will say it's kind of like Continuum, except for. It's a different oh future God, that you're coming from. I know. Yeah, it's, it's but it's it's not as sexy as good. Like Continuum is no. very sexy. Yes, right, and glossy and kind of uh, it moves along and everything. Like that. Twelve Monkeys is the very opposite of that. It's more X Filesy. Yeah, fair than, enough. Than Continuum. Well, you know I like X Files, but X Files yeah, you have but, to sit and think about. It. You have to you have to pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, yeah. but X Files was the detective story. This is not. This is more of a suspense thriller. Yeah. And uh, probably not. Yeah, it's it's normal. It, it probably would be now. Mr. Robot, on the other hand, is totally my jam right now. Oh, really? I was going to ask about that because I uh, it was kind of too dark for me. And then the last episode came out and I was like, really? I've, now I have not seen the last episode yet. Yeah, it just it. I won't spoil anything for you, but it just got a little bit too crazy, a little bit too dark for me but <laughs> i mean it's right on the edge I, is I'll it admit. darker than eating babies i mean seriously man that was rough well you knew that it's sci-fi so it's got a a, a yeah. fantasy element to you eating babies that the um mr robot is all real world so yeah it, it's like stuff that can actually happen and it's it's way more depressing <laughs> yeah it is and then well, i guess go ahead yeah, shannon I think the only show i've been getting into lately is more like mystery but That's a very you type of show, It's a very me because it's... It's detectives it's in the detective. 1800s. It's, it's early crime 1900s, scene. Or. It's, a, it's a crime scene detectives when mm. it's first being introduced as crime scene stuff. Yeah, forensics is, like, new at that point. You'd have been great in that time if you didn't get, like, beheaded for witchcraft or something like that. <laughs> I know. I was born in the wrong century. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they don't have air conditioning back then, and you'd have been required to wear a dress. Well, mm. I think that's one of the reasons why civilization really took off in Northern Europe was because it was a more temperate climate. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. See, uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, you'd have been you'd have been in the United States without air conditioning. That sucks. It, it it's really it, uh, ew. Yeah, I remember there's a reason everybody had handkerchiefs back then, man. He's wiping the sweat, and everybody stunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's bad. It's like- <laughs> Freaking gym at work. It is so gross. In the men's locker room, there's mold all over. The- they they changed out the shower heads, but it doesn't help because there's like literally black mold all over the, the shower bay. And it, it's like, I'm trying to remember how many, like 12 or so shower heads. And it's just an open bay. And it's it, you see all this black crap around. You don't dare go in there without flip flops. And even when you do, when the water actually overcomes the flip flops, you know, if it's having a slow drain day or whatever, you're like, ew. And then there are old guys that stand underneath the hair dryers naked and they're oh. drying off everything. Matter of fact, one was bent over drying off his ass. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> come on. Have whatever. some self respect, sir. <laughs> I, I can't do it anymore. I, I've, Train myself just, to go home and shower at home instead, because absolutely, or join a separate gym or some. You know, I unfortunately, mean, holy crap, I can't, man. It's it's the price I have to pay for that extra hour off to go to the gym. I have to use that one gym, so oh, it's wow, a life. Wow, that sucks, yeah, dude. It's a work liability thing. So yeah, there's that, and um, I'm now taking protein shakes afterwards or post workout or whatever. So I just keep a cooler in the car and go out and have the shake and drive home. And by the time I'm home, I'm not sweating anymore. So just take a shower. But yeah, the the men's bathroom at my gym is um should there Doc Ewell should put a singularity bomb in there. I think that would be best for everyone. <laughs> it should just just cleanse it. Just, just it should cease to exist. I mean, there's a sauna in there. There's a, a steam room. Oh, in the there. sauna's got to be nasty. If the showers are like black moldy, the sauna, which is always wet, has just got to be disgusting. The tile came off on the steam room ceiling uh, about a year ago, so they closed it off for nine months so that they could redo it. And it took them nine months. I think they had to get a contractor on 
contract and whatever. And I don't think anybody was really in a rush to do it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, I'm not. I'm not taking that job. Yeah. <laughs> so the sauna, I, I've gone in once or twice, like in the in the winter, where I just I I want to heat up before I leave or something like that. But even then, I like bring extra towels and I put the towels down and I sit oh, on the towels. Man. And you're not supposed to, you know, be naked in there. And just for uh, health reasons, and there's a couple guys that do that. And then they just posted, I wish I could take a picture, but of course, you're not supposed to use your camera phone in the in the locker room. They just put sure. up signs uh, outside the um, the hooks in the shower where you would put your towel, and it says, do not put your underwear on these hooks. I'm like, oh, oh, oh nasty. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not doing this anymore. Ugh. That is um, no, just no. <laughs> just tough. I mean, I just found out that like the we just moved into a new office at work, and it's a beautiful building, beautiful facility, and all that kind of stuff. And they completely we have the first floor of this whole building, and th- the women's restroom in there is three times the size of the men's. They have a couch, a lamp, yeah. a little lounge area, a coffee table <laughs> in there. I'm like, what the hell, man? <laughs> you go into the men's restroom, and it look. I'm, there are, there's two stalls and a urinal, a sink and a paper towel dispenser. That's and a trash can. That's it. That's it. They've got a little like throw rug in there and a makeup station with all the lights around it. And I'm sh- like, what the hell? A shower. We have a urinal right outside my. There's I work in a big building and there's multiple bathrooms, but right outside my my office bay area, there's a bathroom that is the quickest to use. And unfortunately, one of the urinals keeps on gurgling up. So, so <laughs> oh, half sad. of the floor is like has water in it, and we've reported it, reported it, reported it. They continue to reopen it. We're like, this is a health hazard because we don't know what's growing in that freaking water. And <laughs> so, somebody puts a sign up on the door because there's urinals on both sides, and somebody puts a sign up on the "Welcome to uh, Lake." Oh gosh, I can't remember what the lake's name was, but Lake Pebegon or something like that. <laughs> and and one arrow said, "Docks this way and the beach this way." So. So we always make fun of, did you go to the docks or did you go to the beach? You know, so, <laughs> That's what, nasty, dude. What, what kind of bacteria, flesh-eating bacteria did you pick up? You know, it's like, ugh. Yeah. <laughs> My work. Love it. Love it. <laughs> You're like, love it. Love it. Oh, yeah. It's sexy as all hell. I uh, go to monsterjobs.com, resume, send. Click, click, <laughs> click. <laughs> resume, click. send. Career builder. Click, click, click. There you go. <laughs> oh, dude. Broadcast has been successfully terminated.